Happy New Year, Southview. We are so glad you're joining us today. Hey, this is our Vision Casting Sunday. We got a great message for you. Get ready to go deep. Enjoy. You know, God's doing good things. Did you know that? Did you know that? We've been praying against this virus and things are starting to trickle down. Even CDC says five days and the virus affects. I mean, I thought about it this week and I was like, why aren't we praising the Lord? We've been praying for this thing for two years. And I'm going to rejoice and believe that the church's prayers are dissolving. Can we just believe for something like that? We had a friend of ours, one of our one of our board members that was in the hospital this past week, were released That's out of the right. hospital Amen. from COVID. Come on, now we're celebrating for Jason and Robin. We oh oh okay, son, where's my water? Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Let's serve your mom and your dad. And <laughs> was this for you? Did you want this? Okay. And we had an ultrasound, and we found that our son in there is doing healthy. Many of you know. Active, active baby boy. Many of you know that we were with twins and one of them has passed, but the other one is healthy. So healthy, in fact, that the ultrasound technician couldn't even measure everything right because he was kicking around. It's like, settle down, boy. So I believe he's a wide yeah. receiver or a point guard. Well, he's going to make his dad a lot well, of money in Jesus' we'll name. See. All right, let's go. We'll see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The vision for today. <laughs> we're the excited vision. to bring forth the vision, but we want to do a little recap before we yeah, bring yeah. forth. Come on. The new and I mean, there's not too much of a recap. If I've talked to a lot of people that says 2021 was just as bad as 2020 for some people, if not worse, which I'm so sorry. Um, but there is hope in Jesus that 2022 is going to be a good year. Um, I know we live in a world right now. I sometimes we tend not to focus so much on that because that'll just tear you down. But if you get in there, it's a hot mess in there and there's a lot of heaviness out there. And so if you're not grounded, going deep, like we're going to go today in Jesus, you're going to get lost. So our prayer for this church and this body and the church at large is that we're going to go deep in 2022 and we're going to, um, catch the goodness that God has for us. We're not going to focus on what the world says, but we're going to focus on what the Lord Good. says. Amen. Come on. So, that's the word for this year. That's right. The word for this year is the word deep. And many of us, if you've been here a long time, you know, we've had words and phrases from the Lord. One was revival culture. One was, you would think I remember it after last service. You still don't remember it. <laughs> Consistency, flexibility. flexibility. Come on now. Think big, act big, dream big. These are all things in the past. But good. today, we want to go deep. Are we excited about we going are deep? Excited. This is our first time here. Deep this is our first time. Out to deep. I wanna, yes, I do remember that song. We're not going to go there. The reality is, is when I think about the word deep, my mind, here's the deal. I, we, we have this house now on an acre of land, and I've been infatuated with these trees. I don't know what it is. I, somebody from New Jersey, Italian, like, we're normally not into trees, but we're into trees. And I'm watching these trees. They're massive trees. They've been there for so many years, and there's nothing that, like, moves them. Like, maybe a couple limbs fall off with the storms, but literally, these trees are there, and they're just, they're so massive, they're a reminder when I look out my window, like, these things have been here before me. Hundreds and I'm, of years. Hundreds of years. And so when I think about deep, I think about trees, and I did some research for you, church, about roots and trees. Are you ready for this? How many are excited uh, horticulturists? That's me. Oh, you're okay. This is you're for gonna you. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Root depth is an important aspect to tree growth. Now, let me say this, because some of you are like, I thought we were in church. The reality reality is, is the natural always emulates what's happening in the supernatural. God demonstrates things in the natural so we can actually see the supernatural take form. So when we look at tree growth, the root systems are known to perform a variety of functions. These roots range from absorption of water, nutrients, and food, anchoring a tree, and even producing vegetation, fruit. When your roots are deep, it actually causes you to have fruit. Some of you know where I'm going here. The root depth is not determined by tree size. One of the most important things you'll need to know is that a tree size doesn't translate to root depth. 
it may be surprising to know that some of the hugest trees have the most shallowest root systems. My question to you today is, who are you looking to that seems so together, that their marriage looks good, their ministry looks good, everything they do looks great, but really there's no depth. I want to talk to you about the depth, not so much what you can see on the natural. They tend to thrive in areas where other trees, especially those with shallow roots, won't. Listen to this. You can thrive, a tree can thrive when they have deep roots. They can thrive in harsh conditions. They're unlikely to be affected by drought stress. Let me say this to you. Harsh conditions when you have deep roots actually cause you to thrive. You won't just get through a year. You'll thrive in a year. I can say with all certainty, we thrived in 2020 and 2021 because our roots are deep. The shepherd's tree is among the trees with the deepest documented roots. Its roots can go as deep as 230 feet in the ground. Guess where shepherd's trees thrive? In the Kahari Desert. Come on now. Factors that could impact root depth include soil compaction. My question to you, church, is what soil are you plugged into? As well as genetics. How many know that what your parents did before you trickled down to who you are today? Those of you with kids here today, let me say this. You're not just at church because you need to be here, but you're here. You're setting a tone, a legacy for your children's children's children. Come on now. See, root depth is important to God. Jeremiah 17 says this, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in in the Lord, whose trust is in God. He is like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the streams and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious, and is not anxious, and is not depressed, anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. I'm getting ready to preach because I'm getting ready to launch off my chair. If that is not a word from the Lord today, it's time to go deep. I'm going to invite our ushers to come up and pass out these postcards here today. We want to share with you a visual reminder, a breakdown of the word deep. The word deep is actually an acronym. An acronym means that each one of these letters stand for a word, right? Yep. And we got this. Tell them a little bit as they're passing this out how you well, feel like Mark, the Lord gave. Well, Mark, as we were sitting down discussing. <laughs> yeah. As we were in the uh, holy place, in the sweet presence we, of the yeah, Lord. We were going to the mountaintop. The Shekinah glory. <laughs> no, actually, that's actually a good testimony right there because, you know, how many know you don't need to be in a deep, quiet place to hear from the Lord, that God speaks to you right where you are. Yeah. And when you live in a loud house like we are, um, quiet places are few and far between. So we're thankful that the Lord shows grace upon us. <laughs> and he's given us this acronym um, as we were just laying on the couch one night, talking, discussing, and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit drops down and it just rolled off the tongue like... It's been there for years. Yeah, and I, and I want to say this, too, because sometimes it can be kitschy, like, oh, isn't that cute? Look at this little branded thing here. And it's, it's really, this is, this is what we believe the Lord is giving to us as a church. It's not just go deep, but we believe that as we do each one of these four things, that this church will not only grow, but the depth of your walk with the Lord will grow deeper. And, and I'm going to show you through Scripture. In fact, over these next few weeks, we're going to be breaking down each one of these words because I want you to know this is not just something we came up with. It's not just like if you do these four steps, you will be successful. This is literally biblical things, precepts, yeah. understanding that when we walk with the Lord in these ways, we will see fruit. Actually, these are the basics, people. These are pretty much the basics of Christianity. Yeah, right. So we got to get these down and we got to go deep. Yeah. Uh, the first one is discipleship. And that's, we want to be raising and empowering people to follow Jesus. Yeah, come on. What does that look like, right? A lot of people, when they think that, they're like, oh, my goodness, I have to have a Bible study. I have to have people over. We got to go through the whole Bible through that's in a year. Study. Yeah, all that. No, actually, if you look at John 13, 35, it says... 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. By what? If you love one another. Discipleship is as simple as loving people and showing the Jesus that's inside of you to other people. And then here's where we have, where we fall short, right? If the Jesus ain't operating inside of us, <laughs> We ain't showing Jesus to the world. We're not being disciples of him. Right. When we emulate to the world out there, we should be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all those fruits. And I'm not saying we don't have bad days. I'm not saying we don't have bad times. But for the most part, when people think of you, they should see what's different about that person. Yeah, yeah. Not they're just like my coworker, or they're just like the other girl in high school or whatever, but they should say, no, there's something different. And the Lord says, because you're my disciple, you're different. You love people. Right. And so we want to empower each other to be disciples of Jesus. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's telling them now, you go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Did you know that this is a book of commands that are good for us? Like, we shouldn't stray away from being like, oh, oh I don't want to talk about the word because I don't want to be offensive. No, the word brings life. And if anything, it offends the sin within us. And God says, go and teach them to observe it. And I love this. And behold, I am with you always to the end. He actually goes with you. So when you minister to someone, he's right there with you. And here's the deal with discipleship, because I'll even take it from a leadership standpoint. Even secular leadership says you should have three groups of people in your life. Those that mentor you, those that you walk with, and those that you pour into. And as a church, we should all be doing that. And don't say, well, that's just the pastor's job, or that's just people when you get older. Every one of you should find those people in your life. And I want to say this, if you've been hurt before by a mentor, if you've been through a discipleship movement and you've been hurt, let me just say this. That's just crazy people. But I'll just say, like, like, let's just go find someone else that loves Jesus. In fact, look at their fruit first before you come into alignment with them. Is their marriage healthy? Do they, do they, are they the same person at church as they are at school? Those are the people that you want to be poured into from. And I love this because we've been praying for this. We've been believing as a church for more discipleship moments like our family groups. But also we started our school last year, our Southview School of Equipping. We had so many people graduate. They said, we want another year. So we're doing another semester. So we're going to continue to pour into people teaching and equipping and training and empowering. And guess what else? Releasing. So this is something that not only the church should do. But the whole I will say body this too. If you want to go deep, it starts with dis discipleship. You're going to have to learn something. Yeah. You're going to have to grow. You're going to have to get in the word That's right. and go deep. That's right. The, the, the next letter is the word engagement, and it's recalibrating and reprioritizing people towards a biblical lifestyle. Wow. Things have changed since I grew up in church. Remember when we were going to church? Yeah. You didn't miss a Sunday. There wasn't an option. No. Nowadays, it's like, oh, well, we'll go. There's people know. that we'll say they attend online. Southview. I haven't seen them in three years, but they're, they're active <laughs> members in our church right now. <laughs> That's not Yikes. you. You're here, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Take that out of the video. <laughs> go ahead. Talk, please. Hurry up. Um, I was just kidding. It's a joke. Be, needless to say, this engagement piece was kind of... Um, three years. They haven't shown yeah. up. <laughs> Let it go, Pastor. Let it go. <laughs> They're watching us right now online. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever you're Bless at, you all you're loved. online. Bless Just you. come to church. Try um, to come one Sunday. <laughs> Midweek, anything. Okay, back to engagement, everyone. Um, this engagement piece, um, yeah. when we were talking and discussing it, and what, it, what does that really mean or what does that look like? Um, basically, we're living, we're seeing we're living in a world where people are present but not here. If I could see inside all your minds right now, you're probably thinking about it, not even listening to me. You're thinking about 100,000 different things because we're so good at being present but not here. And so if we're going to go deep with the Lord, you have to be present and here. You have to be tapped in to what he's doing. You when have you say, to be engaged. When you say social media has caused this, right? We feel like we know someone so intimately because we watch them on a screen. Yeah. And like I know everything about them. Right. 
and we've never been in contact with, never sat down, actually saw them face to face. Exactly. Or if you just post something, that doesn't mean it's true, what? right? Just because you post that your marriage is great oh. or just because you post that you're happy today doesn't mean it's true. Save it. Right? Um, so we as Christians need to change this. We need to become more engaged in what's happening yes. in our own lives. Forget about everybody else right now. Let's say that too. Forget about what's happening on social media and get engaged into your own life because only you can change your life, That's right? right. Um, and we don't want to be just hearers of the word, right? But do what it says. That's what James tells us. Don't just listen to these words. Don't just open your Bible and read them, but challenge yourself to actually do what's written in it. Yeah. Because then your lives are going to change. Then you're going to see the fruit. Everybody wants the product of somebody's uh, great life, of what they've accomplished or what they have. But you didn't see all that they did to work for that. Most of the time, we never see the prayer, the pain, yeah. the intercession, sacrifice. the sacrifice yeah. that went in to get to that. But we want that. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it takes a lot of pain and sacrifice to get the things of the Lord that you want over your life. I mean, God said, in this world, you will have trouble. He already set us up. Yeah. But he gave us all the tools to be victors in it. So I'm here to encourage you that you can be victorious in 2022. So whatever happens doesn't have to bring you down. We just sang about that. For I believe that I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. I'm confident. I truly am confident that I will see great things in 2022, yes. no matter what happens. And so... It does. It requires us to be engaged. Yes. I know a lot of times we start off New Year's and we're like, okay, I have my goals. I have my resolutions. I'm not going to do this. I am going to do that. What if we as Christians started off our New Year and say, what do I do? How do I advance the kingdom in 2022? What if that's our goal? Wow. As Christians, that seems kind of, should we be doing that? Hello, people. Yes. Our number one goal as disciples, as followers of Christ is on our mind. How do I advance the kingdom of God? What does that look like in my life? How does that work in the people I come in contact with, in what my goals are? Because we all have our goals and our dreams. Is that what God has? So I challenge you as you start this year, say to the Lord, what do you want me to be engaged in and what don't you want me to be right. engaged in? Wow, that's great, man. You're so good <laughs> at this. Acts 2 in Scripture, this is right after Pentecost moment where the Holy Spirit comes and empowers all these people praying and seeking the Lord engaged in this idea that if we pray and seek God, somebody's coming. And it says they receive the Holy Spirit and in verse 41 so those who received his word, Peter preaches this amazing evangelistic message. It says they were baptized and added that day about 3,000 souls. 3,000 people come to know Jesus. This is the first altar call, the first moment where Peter preaches the gospel of Jesus, and people respond. And the very next verse, and now we know that there had to be a lot of things that happened in between these two verses because you had to get everybody's email addresses and follow up with them after they got prayer. But the reality is, is after all of this, it says, and they devoted themselves. Now let's just pause for a moment. And they devoted themselves. Whatever you devote yourself to, you will see an action from. And the reality is, is many of us, we want all of the after effects, but what are you devoting yourself to? Look what it says here. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. God actually wants you to get together with people and have dinner with them. It says, and an all came upon every soul. And this is the cause, this is the effect of the cause. It says, many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed, I love the word all because that means every single person who believed were together. They had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing them and proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the church together and breaking bread in their homes together, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. All of this happened 
because they were devoted to one another. They were devoted to the word of God. They were devoted to saying, we will not shrink back. I don't want to go to church today. I'm having a bad day, but I'm pressing in because I'm devoted to a bigger issue, a bigger cause, a bigger mandate. And because of that, there was revival. We want revival. We have to be devoted to something. Can't just pray for something and just expect it to magically appear. You have to make the time to be engaged. This is, we're going to unpack that a lot more in the previous weeks. The next E is evangelism, sharing the love of God in our communities. This was funny because when we discussed this like with, with our, our staff, staff and, and our elders, yeah, yeah. everyone's like, oh. Scary. Oh, we got to actually... You know, got out of our comfort zones here. <laughs> yeah, go down to Na- downtown Nashville, set up a box, stand on it, and start preaching hell and brims, fire and brimstone no, to people. that's not what we're talking bring about. Bring altar calls. <laughs> going to hell, everyone. We're talking about just being Jesus to the community. That's right. It's Pastor different. Mark. It's not that. <laughs> but when we think about evangelism, there is a stigma of... Right. Uh, scared, fear, right? I don't want to do this. It's uncomfortable, right? I don't feel, it's not natural. Um, but Acts 1 8 says, um, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. And I want that power to be upon us and be reminded so that when we're going out or when we come in contact with somebody, that boldness comes on us and we're like, you know what? It's not about me. It's about this person, and it's about leading them to Jesus. I'm constantly reminding myself, like, if I have to go back and think about this, am I going to regret that I was too busy or that I was nervous or whatever? No, I'm going to be like, praise the Lord, hallelujah, they made it to heaven, and I had a little part to play in that. And I know you had mentioned before that sometimes um, it's just a seed you might plant. You might not lead them all the way to salvation. You could just be that one person that gave them hope in the Walmart aisle, and then the next day somebody else speaks something, and then the next day somebody else says something. But just being Jesus to them, that's a point of evangelism. It's going out and showing the world that there are good people out there, that there are people that Yeah, man. Kindness is so uncommon that just being kind to someone speaks Jesus louder than it ever has before. We were in we were in Kroger the other day and we we're checking out and there was this little old lady that was behind us and she had a couple items and we were like I just told her I said I think we're supposed to pay her for her stuff. And so we did and she was like blown away. But the reality was is as we did it, there, one of the ladies that was bagging up the stuff, she was like, "Man, this is so cool." And I just thought about it. I was like, it really wasn't a big deal cuz I counted her items and I knew they weren't expensive. But the reality is is when when I saw <laughs> When I saw it, I thought, no, I was just listening to the Holy Spirit because the lady behind her was like, what about me? And I'm like, no, well, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me about you. You have ham and stuff. But um, (laughs) all I know is like when we got done doing that, like I don't think we went home and regretted it. Like we weren't like, I can't believe we, we were kind to somebody. But here's what we don't know. We don't know what that C did to that person bagging the groceries. We don't know what that C did for the one that was checking it out. We don't know what the C did for the lady that was across from the aisle who was watching it all happen. We don't do this to promote ourselves. I'm only telling you that evangelism can be as simple as you just being kind. It's a step. It's not your job to save people. Let me share this in Matthew 16. Jesus says, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized is saved. And whoever does not believe will be condemned. It does not say if you don't get them saved, you're at fault. It says whoever does it, it's on them. And it says, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. This is the good news. As you do it, you get a whole tool belt full of stuff from heaven. Like it's not just you just saying things. Oh, look what you get to do. You'll cast out demons. Mm, that's pretty good. You'll also speak in new tongues. Shandarabah, maybe that. Or maybe you'll just understand people that you normally couldn't understand because the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom to be able to relate to them in a new way. Wow, that's revolutionary. They will pick up serpents with their hands and they will drink deadly poison. Now pause for a moment. We're not a serpent church here. And some people are like, what does that mean? What that means is when you share the gospel and you do the work of the Lord, you don't have to fear things coming back on you. I've never seen anybody go into a hospital to lay hands on sick people and come out sicker than when they walked in. Let's not fear things because we're doing the work of the Lord. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? 
This says they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is part of evangelism. I'm preaching already. Please keep going. Keep going. Number <laughs> four is prayers. The P is prayer. Seeking. And now let me just say this because people are like, prayer. That's cute. Sweet prayer, people. Prayer is seeking a deeper intimacy with Jesus. And I'm here to tell you this is not a gender thing either because many times I've been to prayer meetings and it's, it's women and they're doing such a great job. But men, there's something powerful about a man that prays. And I know this in our church. We've cultivated that. I've seen men that were in military, Marines, policemen, I mean, people that really are manly men praying down heaven. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, if, if you're a single man, you want to meet a woman, uh, okay, I'm just kidding. Just learn how to pray. I'm just saying, but, but do it real, okay? <laughs> Seeking a deeper intimacy with Jesus. Matthew 21, 13 says, Jesus walks into the temple. Let me set context. This is a week leading up to his death. Jesus steps into the temple, and he quotes this. He says, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. And the Greek word there actually means to plunder. Now think about that. Like if Jesus were to come back into the church today, what would he say? Like you guys are plundering my house. You come for what you can get, but you don't give anything back in return. So many times we look at all these Pharisees and Sadducees and we think, man, they were bad dudes. But how many of us walk like that in our own life? Maybe you don't set up a table with things to sell, but maybe you come to church and refuse to give God your heart, but you want him to move on your behalf. And I'm telling you, prayer is a deep intimacy with Jesus. It's dialogue. I can't call you my wife if we don't even talk. If I only know you for an hour and 10 minutes on Sunday, but I don't know you on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Exactly. Prayer is just a... Uh, a conversation, really, yeah. between you and the Lord that never ends. That, that's really what prayer is. We, we overcomplicate things yeah. all the time. And God's just like, come talk with me. Come walk with me. Come tell me, you know those things that weigh on your heart and your head? I want to hear those things. That's what God's saying. And so I think if we recognize that, our whole uh, lifestyle will change. We'll begin to see fruits because, like I said in the first service, once you get prayer down and you've got this prayer conversation between you and the Lord, then the intercession part kicks in. And when you're interceding and you're praying, then things begin to break off and things begin to change. You want to see things change in your life, you start praying and interceding, and your life's going to be like it's never been before. There, there, is, there is no administration or government mandate that's going to heal this nation. It's the church praying. It really is. And I just think that God had to get this all fixed up in our lives as the body because we've been trusting too many things. And it's like if we will pray and seek heaven and call down heaven, man, I'm telling you, revival for this nation is not a mystical thought. It really is on the verge. The body of Christ is coming together like never before. And I'm telling you, if we get this, if we go deep together, not only will your marriage be better, your relationship will be better, your school life will be better, all those things, that's natural. But man, people will come to church because they will sense the presence of God. They won't be able to define it, but they'll be like, there's something in here. There's something here that is changing these people's lives. I will say too that the, the deep, this mandate that we have, I hate that word. I can't believe I said it. This call that we have. Mandates are good. It's a good mandate. <laughs> I don't want to hear it right it's now. It's a good mandate. Um, but but um, that <laughs> if we take hold of this, yeah. it will be a sacrifice. It's going to be a sacrifice. But I promise you, if you sacrifice and go deep with the Lord, your lives will never be the same. That's right. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my life to it. ever be the same. It's worth it. And all those things that you want and you desire and your heart is like, I want that, I desire that, they happen when you go deep. It's worth it. It's so worth it. And you know what? This is not out of obligation. If I do this, God will love me. No, it's because I'm in love with him. 
that I want more of him. It's because I'm in love with him that I want to see the kingdom advance through my life. Man, I'm telling you, I don't want to organize my relationship with God around little Jimmy's nap schedule. I want to say, little Jimmy, you're going to church on Sunday because you need God more than you need a schedule in your life. I'm preaching to somebody's parents, but the reality is, is when we put him first, everything else, your marriage, your kids, your life, your finances, your health, it all comes into alignment. He Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. As we start this, next week we're starting our 21-day fast. And let me just say this. I love January fast because like churches all over the world are doing this together. So if you're ever feeling like, man, this is tough, there, I know all, most pastors in this city and we're all doing this together. And so here we are, we're fasting and we're praying, and we're going to be going through each one of these in depth. We're going to be challenging you each day. But I want to say this to you. I want you to fast food. Not fast food, but fast food. Because what happens is when you deny your flesh, your body begins to crave something. And that's when we can hear from the Lord in a whole deeper way. So fasting social media, it's good. Fasting TV, it's good. These things are important, but take it to the next level. And as you do, I promise you, these next 21 days, starting next Sunday, you will encounter God in a whole new way. It's happened for years we've been doing this. You become more desperate. More desperate. And I, from what I've known from the church, we don't really do anything till we're desperate. Yeah. So, I love this. And Joel, we're going to go back into worship but we, we quote this scripture quite a bit, Joel 2. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. But there's a word in there that says afterwards. After what? Read Joel 2. They fasted. They prayed. They sought the Lord. They fasted. They prayed. They cried out to God. They worshiped him. After all of that, he pours out his spirit on all people. And I'm telling you, Nashville, Middle Tennessee is ripe. It is ripe. People from all over the country are coming here. Not because it's Tennessee or, yeah, they think so. But God is wooing them here because there is revival brewing in this nation. But especially, I believe, in this state. That's it. Are you ready to go deep with us this year? Hey, don't forget next week, January 9th, we start a 21 day corporate fast. You can find all the information on our website. Check us out. We'll see you next week.